What's up people, hope you're having an awesome day wherever and whenever you're watching this. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video here at Most Amazing Top 10. Okay, bunkers. What do we think about bunkers? I used to think they were semi cozy from what I learned about them in year 6, but then anytime I've seen any bunker, whether that's in movies or shows, they're always just the opposite of homely and include no plumbing facilities for a toilet. Like where do you expect me to pee folks? But anyway, you guys loved part 1 with Danny, so here I am with part 2. This is the top 10 scary underground bunkers that should have stayed a secret part 2. Starting us off with number 10 is the Maginot Line. Now the Maginot Line was a fortified line of bunkers, defences and forts that were along the French German border. The entire thing took 9 years to construct and was finished in 1938. And it is massive you guys, I don't think I've ever seen a bunker this big. Sometimes the bunkers would take up an entire mountain which is no joke. Like they had layers, it would go surface of the earth, then the soldiers quarters, then more quarters then the ammunition, then the telephone bureau, then the hospital, and then the subterranean connection which was an underground train of sorts, and then the final bottom layer was the ammunition stores. I feel like this wasn't in order but you guys get what I mean. And to get to each layer were underground elevators, like I'm thoroughly impressed that they constructed all this in the 30s. But the reason I'm going on about the past is because the turrets and entrances and exits of the bunkers are still very much exposed, so I'm pretty sure you could just go right in and explore the mini city below if you truly wanted to, but I mean I don't know how tempting that would be unless you're an urban explorer because based off the pictures of the bunkers it looked like one of those abandoned creepy asylums where you just know something or someone is lurking down there and has been for a while and is just waiting for someone to venture down there to kill. And I don't know about you but I don't intend on being that person. Coming in at number 9 is the underground city. Located around 9 miles away from Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, Site R, also known as the underground pentagon, is a massive bunker bunker that was built in the 50s. The bunker was built for Armageddon itself, there are miles of underground tunnels and access shafts yet no one has been willing to say what is actually on site. There are rumours that Raven Rock is a full underground city and I'm talking streets, pumped in air, room for 3000 people, houses with huge supplies of meals ready to eat and of course a special presidential apartment as well. No bunker is complete without a space for the president am I right? Screw civilians! Many believe it was made to survive an electromagnetic pulse or nuclear blast. There's barely anything known about the bunker or how extensive it really is. The only documents discussing the site just talk about how it's unlawful to make any photograph, sketch, picture, drawing, map or geographical representation of the site. My question is, why did the government commission making a massive end of the world bunker in the 50s? What do they know that we don't know? And should we know that? I feel like we should. Should I be making my own bunker in preparation? Someone let me know. At number 8 we have the Bethesda Bunkers. Now this case is a bit weird because the bunkers were hidden and only became known because the house they were located under had a massive house fire. The house was located in Bethesda in Montgomery County. After the fire, police found the body of 21 year old Askia Kafra in one of the underground tunnels. Daniel Beckwith, the homeowner, was Kafra's friend and he was working inside the house when the fire broke out in the basement. Daniel managed to escape but Kafra died by the time firefighters got inside. Despite all this, he still hasn't talked about what happened that day or why he was building those tunnels and bunkers under his house. I feel like that's the first question that should be answered in this case. His parents suspect there's something more at play here and Kafra even told his friends that Daniel hired him to dig the tunnels but he had to be blindfolded every day before coming into the house because Daniel didn't want him to know where he was living. Which is just very suspicious. I don't know how he didn't see that as a red flag but there you go. The whole thing just screams shady. Just me. Definitely shady. Film and on the 7th floor is the hotel and I mean I wish I was talking about a bunker that had hotel level comfort but alas I am not. Back in 2011 while construction workers were laying the foundation for a bar in the Sofitel legend Metropole Hanoi Hotel they uncovered an air raid shelter under the hotel and boy that was a very long name for a hotel let me just say. It was constructed during a past war with the US and it's basically fully intact. The foyer tunnel is more than 2 meters long and the whole shelter has 6 rooms with 2 entrances. One can be found below the pool and the other is at the hotel centre. Even after it was discovered, everything the workers found remained untouched and the bunker is now open to the public for viewing. It even received a UNESCO Asia Pacific Heritage Award for Cultural Heritage Conservation back in 2013 so it really is like an untouched time relic. It even has an autograph carved into its wall from Australian diplomat Bob Devereaux back in 1975. I'm just surprised no one discovered the bunker before the bar was being built, like did they not discover 
discover it when they were building the hotel itself? How is an underground structure like that so easily overlooked? It beats me. Now at number 6 is the hike. So if you live in Oregon and one day you wake up and feel like you have your life together and decide you know today would be a great day to go for a hike. If you go on the Tillamook Head Travis hike and trek over 6 miles of forest and plunging cliffs you will come upon an old bunker that no one knows about. Well except for the people watching this right now. Now we all know. The landmark of Tillamook Head itself is nearly 15 million years old so it's been through a lot. But 1.5 miles away from Cannon Beach there are bits of moss laden concrete and metal and a bunker the size of a school bus. That's it. There are no signifying plaques, no signage, nothing. Despite the wealth of information that the internet is, no one can seem to find anything about this bunker from the early 40s. But real life historians on the other hand do have some information. Not a lot, but some. A historian at Fort Stevens said the site was used by the US Army Air Corps for about a year, year and a half during World War II. It had a 30 foot tall antenna that was manned around the clock by 8 people and was part of a radar station that looked out for enemy aircraft. The bunker and the antenna were only one small part of the whole thing. It used to include a full camp, a pump house, barracks, a mess hall, storerooms, around 50 to 100 men worked and lived there. So I mean if you don't want to find a creepy old bunker on your morning hike, maybe avoid this trail. Coming in at number 5 is the Nazi bunker. Back in 2015, a team ventured into the Argentinian jungle and found a secret Nazi bunker hidden deep within. First off, I love how the team just happened to go to this part of the jungle and then unknowingly happened upon a Nazi bunker no one had unearthed before. It just seems too good to be true. Am I the only one that's skeptical? But anyway, I've mentioned it in many previous videos that many believe Hitler was still alive after his apparent suicide because he, as well as many other Nazi officials, escaped to Argentina. Many of them fled to South America post World War II, but the three buildings found in the jungle suggest that they actually did a lot of pre planning for this escape. It's not confirmed it was built for this use, but archaeologists are pretty certain it was in case Nazi Germany was defeated. Which, spoiler alert, it was. Inside the bunker, the team found Nazi symbols like the swastika etched into the walls. They found German coins dated from 1938 to 1944 and other items that had Made in Germany written on them. They believe one building was used for storage, the second was for lookout purposes, and the third was for housing. As a hideaway, it was in a prime location as well, 10 minutes from the border with Paraguay, and had a number of escape points. For the most part, the building seemed unused because the Nazis probably realized after fleeing to Argentina, they didn't even have a reason to hide because they were pretty much very welcome in Argentina. At number four is codename 17 5001, aka the secret three story bunker that was one of the communist world's most highly advanced bunkers. It was 16 miles away from Berlin, it reached a depth of 70 meters below ground, and it had 85,000 tons of concrete in the form of a blast cap that was meant to protect from any explosion above. Sounds like the whole shebang. The bunker had tunnels that divided 170 rooms, AC, power generators, a fountain, and even springed rooms that were designed to cushion people from explosions. It took five years to build, and despite being designed for East Germany leader Erich Honecker, and 400 other staff members, it was never used. Eric himself only visited it once and was unhappy with its environment. Urban explorers found and entered the bunker before officials did, but when they finally did find it, they opened it to the public for three whole months. Now its walls are covered in mold and the decontamination chambers are very much out of service. I love how this bunker is literally half above ground, half not, stayed undiscovered for as long as it did. I mean, it's in plain sight, I'm just saying. Filling like at number three slot is a secret French bunker. Bunker. Urban explorer Mark Ascant made it his life mission to find and capture places before they're gone for good so the history behind them isn't lost. He heard rumors of an old hidden Nazi bunker called the Wolf Canyon and went to search for it. Having explored a lot of terrain, he heard about strange concrete buildings in the forest near Marjeval, so he checked there next. He hiked for hours and finally found the building that was slowly but definitely being run down by nature. Inside the extremely run down building was an entire complex that was used by Hitler and his staff. The bunker used to be a key command center for German troops and it even had a swimming pool next to it which they covered in a camouflage tarp to keep hidden. Thankfully Mark found a hole in the wall, I mean I don't know how thankful that is, that let him get inside the building and it looked like a site from American horror story asylum. Long abandoned hallways, over 6 miles of tunnels, rooms and storage areas, it was even equipped for a counter attack if need be. Some say he hid there after a suicide so he could plan attacks on Britain or Paris if need be. Thankfully none of those happened but the bunker was insanely creepy. Imagine going down there to explore and
and never finding your way back. I know there are a lot of Nazi bunkers on this list, but are you really surprised? Hitler was extremely paranoid and wanted to be 100% secure everywhere he went. Every room in every bunker had a purpose. He even designed and ordered every single one of them himself. Man was not playing around. Now at number two is the homeless camp. Back in 2017, as part of a homeless camp clearing in Fountain Valley, police came upon many things. Drugs, needles, stolen items from nearby homes, and a bunker filled with more than 1,000 stolen bikes and a loaded gun. Yeah, I wasn't expecting the last one, were you? The bunker was camouflaged to blend into the dirt and was big enough for a 5 foot 7 person to stand inside. So I'd pretty much fit in there very easily, thank god. Perks of being short. The gun was wrapped inside a hoodie and it had three empty shell casings, meaning it had been fired not once, but thrice. Which creates another problem like when the hell was this gun used? Who did it shoot, if anyone? I hate when one problem breeds other problems, like no, please I'm drowning, I don't need any more problems. But anyway, police have speculated the bikes were part of a large scale theft ring. Residents in the local area have been complaining to sheriffs and police for ages to try and get the homeless encampments cleaned up, but they only got to it that year. Come on authorities, you have to get on it quicker. Maybe if they had listened earlier, they would have found the bunker. Yeah, and not as many bikes would have been stolen and someone might not have been shot. Who knows? And finally, at number one is the Rexall bunker. Now this one, it truly stumped me, like I had so many questions and I know you guys will too and I won't be able to answer any of them, so let's go. Back in 2015, a bunker was discovered very near a Rexall center which was going to be used as a tennis venue for the upcoming Pan American Games. Now if you don't live in North America, a Rexall center is basically sort of like a pharmacy, grocery store sort of thing. Police found the bunker in a densely wooded area that was fenced off restricting access to it. It was a very well built and whoever made it went to extra effort to make sure it wouldn't be found. It was 10 feet underground, 33 feet long, it was receiving power from a cord connected to a generator in a hole dug nearby. Inside the bunker though they found rosary beads nailed to the wall with a remembrance day poppy with them as well. Which begs the question was this just a historical tribute, was it more, no one really knows. On top of that the bunker had it all, a sump pump to remove groundwater, a pulley system, a gas container, moisture resistant light bulbs, food and containers etc. In an attempt to hide the entrance of the bunker the owner covered it with dirt and plywood and insulation was placed around the generator to cancel out its sound. Despite all this being random as hell and the police having no leads on who did it, they can't actually even do anything about it. As weird as it is, it's not a crime to dig a hole. There's nothing about it that warrants criminal action in any way. They've since filled the bunker in but again no idea who made it and why. It's not a crime but it surely should be at least a semi crime or something. And that's it for today's video guys. There is still probably a lot of bunkers that we haven't discovered yet and maybe we never will. In case of a nuclear attack we may need to locate them though but how effective are they really? I mean we all saw how well the crypt worked out in Game of Thrones so should we even bother? Let me know your thoughts below and as always I'm your host Eamon Hassan and I'll see you next time. Bye!